Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning. I'm Christian and I have your word for the day. Today's word for the day is a warning not to make foolish claims and attribute them to God. On Tuesday, Robert told us about Saul's foolish choice to sacrifice to God as a ritual and not actually to honor him. Yesterday, we saw how Saul's son Jonathan trusted God and God provided the Israelites with a victory. Today, we see another example of folly as practiced by King Saul, and this time it almost caused him to forfeit his own son's life. As the Philistine army was fleeing the losing battle discussed yesterday, Saul intended to capitalize on the moment and take full advantage of this opportunity to defeat the Philistines. Rather than have faith that God was in control of the situation, he ordered his soldiers to continue their aggressive chase and prevented them from taking a moment to refresh themselves with food. Saul tried to control the situation and decreed that no one should pause their pursuit to eat in order to win their battle. Let's read starting at verse 36. Then Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night and plunder them until the morning light. Let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatever seems good to you. But the priest said, Let us draw near to God here. And Saul inquired of God, Shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you give them into the hand of Israel? But he did not answer him that day. And Saul said, Come here, all you leaders of the people, and know and see how this sin has arisen today. For as the Lord lives who saves Israel, though it be in Jonathan my son, he shall surely die. But there was not a man among all the people who answered him. Although the demand not to eat was Saul's and not an instruction from God, he claims that whoever broke his command and ate will be put to death. He even goes so far as to say, even if it is Jonathan, not thinking it would be his son. Well, guess what? It was Jonathan. However, in Jonathan's defense, he wasn't aware of his dad's mandate. Fortunately, the Israelite soldiers soldiers rebel against Saul's lack of wisdom. In verse 45, it says, Then the people said to Saul, Shall Jonathan die, who has worked this great salvation in Israel? Far from it. As the Lord lives, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he has worked with God this day. So the people ransomed Jonathan so that he did not die. If the Israelite soldiers had not uh, protested Saul's order, Saul would have likely killed Jonathan to save face. Even though Jonathan was a hero for following God's leading earlier in the chapter and won a great battle against the Philistines. Let's remember this story when we're tempted to pretend that what we want is from God, when really it's just us, us being selfish, expressing our desires and trying to use the implication that it came from God as an excuse. Tomorrow, Robert will share with us how God rejects Saul and ends his rule. Then on Monday, Pastor Chad's going to walk us through David's reign. So I encourage you to come back and hear those words. Have a great day.